NFTs are uh, digital collectibles or digital creations that are images or videos uh, or animations that you can view and enjoy on the internet. But if you want to claim ownership of it, you need to own its digital record. That's how they describe it. I describe it as the second gold rush. Citizens, man, I am honored to have the folks that we have with us right now, Heather B. Tracy G. Number one, we got a pillar in the hip hop culture. This man was uh, an integral part of the success of one of the most legendary groups ever. I'm talking about Houdini. Uh, you will see him as a part of many other artists, whether it's Big Daddy Kane or <laughs> Biz Marquis, whoever there is that existed in hip hop are some way connected to this man. His fashion sense was impeccable. His dance moves were incomparable. Crazy. <laughs> The love that people have for this man is unmatched. And he's been the reason for a lot of different ventures that I've been a part of. He's one of the few people I could count on one hand how many people in the 30 years that I've done this plus have come to me with opportunity. Mostly folks come to me for opportunity. I don't I'm not complaining. I embrace that. I you know, I accept that and I give that back. This man is unusual though. He's someone who has never asked me for a thing. He goes by the name of Cliff Love. He's over hey. here right here. Oh. Cliff, Love, Cliff Love, come here, man. Get in the light, man. Get, get in the light, Cliff. Get in the light. Love, Brooklyn. Get in the Jones. light. There he goes. <laughs> Cliff Love, Cliff Love right here. This is my brother right here. Uh, an, another, another man, as we start to talk about these NFTs with attitudes, and we just kind of gave an example of how this is the new wave. This is a way that artists who weren't able to benefit monetarily off of their art because of the schematic, diabolical contracts that record companies provided that were so art, un, artist unfriendly. Now those artists whose music made other people or their events or videos made other people millions of dollars, now they got a chance. They got a second chance to make money off the art that they created in perpetuity and to have complete ownership. Now, the people that are here today are all historical in their own rights. Heather, sitting next to you is a man who is a documentarian that I know from being from the West Coast, being from the Bay Area and coming down to L.A. with my partner, King Tech, in the late 80s, early 90s, and just witnessing um, this amazing thing we call culture grow. This man has captured all of it. And not just West Coast artists, not just the L.A. dream team. You know, not the L.A. posse, not just CIA and NWA, you know, <laughs> not not just uh, the world class wrecking crew, not just DJ Battle Cat and the Cat Brothers, DJ Pool, everybody that come from L.A. I'm not even tipping the scale of how many people he's covered from LL Cool J to Queen Latifah to Snoop Dogg. The list goes on and on and on to MC Hammer. I got to throw Hammer in there. That's right. This man is a part of the company called NFT with attitudes. I want y'all to give a big round of applause for the legendary Matthew McDaniel. Come on, man. Brother Matt. This next guy sitting in between him and this legend next to me is the founders of Blockchain Millionaire. They're responsible for the hip hop archives deals with NFT Genius and um and G Gaia Marketplace. Yeah, on Gaia Market. On Gaia Market, it's a Mark Cuban company, Universal slash Peacock series. Yes. This man has the science behind the technology that makes this world function. Mm -hmm. And we had a long conversation. Why he's so important is because just like politics, sometimes things are written in languages that keep people ostracized and make you not want to invest and find out more about what this is because it's a gold mine happening. That's right. And they don't want to share it. You see what they did with the cannabis industry. They outlawed it, and then they want to make it legal but make it impossible for those who built it to participate yeah. in the financial gains, right? This man has the technology. He has the code. Um, he has the information that's valuable, that's invaluable. You can't even put a price on it on how this world works. I want you to um, please give a big round of applause for my man Oswald English. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you. And we love Sway in the Morning. <laughs> yeah, that's, so a drop, that's a drop. That's a drop. 
Okay, we got about 40 minutes. Uh, now these intros taking up the time, but I got to do it right. <laughs> this next man right here, he's been on the show, and we start communicating back and forth. And I remember just getting off, you know, communication with him and just sitting and staring at the ceiling going, what the fuck is happening right here? Like how, you know, this is how God works. This is how the culture works. Mm. You know, we known each other, mm -hmm. you know, over the years, but to sit and have conversations uh, wasn't necessarily in the equation. And that's because it wasn't ripe yet. It wasn't time, right? And we start communicating, and I invited this man up here to come have a conversation with us. And even in that conversation, we didn't get the chance to accomplish everything I wanted to accomplish. I wanted him to walk away knowing that I love you for your contributions. There would be no death row. I paused on purpose so you could take that in. Mm. Preach. There would be no death row records. Preach. If it wasn't for him. His contribution, he is the nucleus of how that formed together, how Dr. Dre, Suge, all of that happened. He's the one, he's the liaison that brought this dynasty, that legacy together. Right. He's written for many artists, for Dr. Dre, of course, for Easy e of course, but it's the what he's written for himself mm. that we celebrate and we marvel at <laughs> decades later. We went over the song, The Formula, this morning and dissected the bars. Heather, you want to speak to that? Bars. <laughs> Heather cool. said he was the guy we couldn't tell where he was from. Mm -mm. I was on the West. She was on the East. His story is important. Um, he has a documentary that was filmed, that was featured at Tribeca Film Festival. Come on, big round of applause. That's an that's a accomplishment in itself. That's right. In it, you see iconic people giving him praise, whether it's Dr. Dre, whether it's Ice Cube, whether it's Erica Badu, that queen. Salute to that queen, Erica Badu. Amen. Come on, man. Salute to that queen. Round of applause to him. Amen. It. Let me tell you something. Imagine if he didn't connect the death row, made the death row connection. We wouldn't have the chronic... RBX, Dog Pound, Rage, Sam Sneed, Snoop Dogg. We wouldn't have them the way we have them today. If that didn't happen and Dre didn't break off eventually and start his own company, Aftermath, would we know Exhibit the way we know Exhibit? We knew Exhibit, though. Exhibit was spitting fire even before Aftermath. <laughs> Just tell the truth. <laughs> would we have Shade 4-5? Will we be sitting in this room with that man's picture on the wall? Will we have Eminem? If Dre's trajectory had went differently, maybe he didn't have the same type of results he was able to gain through this introduction, this liaison that this man served as. Will we even be here? Would Eminem have the career? You ain't even thought of that. Yes, I have. Oh, you have? Okay, good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the iconic one himself, the legendary, the D.O.C. is here. Standing over here. Thank you, brother. Look, I take, I take no credit for any of that. I, I certainly appreciate it. Yeah. I'm thankful and I'm grateful, but it's a G.O.D. thing, not a D.O.C. thing. It's and, a God thing. And so what may have appeared to be my destruction mm -hmm. was actually just the beginning of my construction. Ooh. And in that moment, all of those things were birthed from that, from that beauty. Mm -hmm. So that today I can sit here and bask in this beauty. Yes, absolutely. Now, now I can become, now I can be the man mm -hmm. that I was supposed to, well, that I've been, I've been meant to be mm -hmm. this whole time. Cause it's not about me. It's about, us. Yes. I told, matter of fact, I told Dre that mm -hmm. when I was doing this documentary. He said, no, nah, man, it's about you. And I think that, that what he thought I was saying is it's about he and I. Mm -hmm. And, and in, a, in, a, in a small way it is, right? Yeah. When you watch the film, you see, I've never seen Dre as open on camera, as, mm -hmm. as inviting to people, as warm and loving. Because mm -hmm. the guy's my brother and he loved me. And, and you could just see that, you know? Yeah. Uh, 
same thing about Snoopy and Cube and him and Badu. You know what I mean? But but I meant us as in hip hop. Yeah. I mean as a culture. Us as yeah. as people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because if you look at that documentary, it is a microcosm of what hip hop has been. It is hip hop. Mm -hmm. It came in that its story started with so much joy and promise and it's going to be this beautiful thing and then and then these elements are introduced mm -hmm. and then during that period of time it seems to be a slow descent into you know what what what, what could be called chaos mm -hmm. and and misunderstanding but towards the end god shows up mm -hmm. and things begin to take a turn for the better you know, to, for for his direction, I think in hip hop. Yeah. Well, we are now with these young kids out here with this with this miscellaneous gunplay. Yeah. And all of the 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 bullshit that's mm -hmm. going on in the streets. Mm -hmm. At least where I'm from, I'm starting to hear the young boys in the streets think differently mm -hmm. and speak differently. I'm talking about the trappers. Yeah. You know, the guys what, that's out there. What, what are they saying it. and thinking? What are you hearing? They're thinking that, you know what, maybe there's a different way mm -hmm. to get this money and keep this money. Maybe the penitentiary ain't the shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's a way that we can get this money and use it to build us mm -hmm. instead of uh, standing uh, in front of a, a, a telephone camera with a, a 2,000, 3,000 ones mm -hmm. shining for yeah. folks. Like it's uh, the, the ending of the doc of that documentary is me sitting in front of a bunch of kids from West Dallas where I was uh -huh. born. Uh -huh. Ages ranges from about seven to ten years old. And my purpose for, for that scene was to allow those beautiful black kids to see themselves yeah. on Netflix uh -huh. at that at that age. Uh -huh. So they can begin to dream these uh -huh. dreams, uh -huh. right? And so uh the purpose is to to catch those babies now before they start to think about what they seeing these kids do now as the way to go mm -hmm. and repeat that. Now we finna go stop this bullshit right here mm -hmm. and we're going to incorporate these guys who have demonstrated that bullshit to correct themselves yep. along with these babies. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna help us all. It's gonna help us all. I don't I don't have any uh any hatred towards anybody mm -hmm. uh in, in any past action. And, and, and these young guys that's in the street, I love you. I, I damn near don't give a fuck what you do to get it, get it. Yeah. But the killing and the and the, and the gun shit, that shit must end. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you get rid of your guns because yeah. you may need them okay. one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But it's it's the purpose that you're using them for is 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 destructive. We need to we need to you know change that. It ain't what you're doing. It's just how you're doing it. What do, what do you feel about the DOC? Yeah, the yeah. Mm -hmm. applause. How do you feel about when I think about, because they're not the first to do it, these young kids that's talking about gunplay. And, and, and uh, we were doing that in the late 80s and we were doing that in the 90s too. Uh, I think we understood that for the most part then it was a record. Okay. For them, that's real life for them. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. means if I make a record about busting a nigga in his ass and I don't go do it, I'm not real. Yeah. And that's ignorant, mm -hmm. right? There's a difference between uh, Goodfellas, the TV show, mm -hmm. and walking the streets out there and, and where the real Goodfellas are um, and playing that role. So, it, we, we, this is art. This is about elevation and imitation. And life should imitate art. Or art should Im imitate life, not life should Im imitate art. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We, we, we're supposed to use this thing to grow. We're supposed to use this thing to be as God given, mm -hmm. right? And so, we we've learned so well from our uh, the people that have taught us along mm -hmm. this journey mm -hmm. about how to be Americans or whatever that means, mm -hmm. as people in this place that we we we've turned into them. Mm. So the indoctrination of this uh, mentality of what America is. Uh, as which, long as I got mine, fuck them. That attitude. I see what you're saying. Uh, the DOC is here, man, and we got we got NFTs with attitude. This is gonna come around. Watch. It's gonna come around, fellas. It's gonna come around because what you're saying is so important. Just on some MC thing, though. 
Um, I want to ask you, since we're talking about NFTs with attitudes and a lot of what's going to be featured on this platform has to do with a lot of archived, legendary footage from different people from the hip-hop scene, primarily on the West Coast, but folks from other places around. Today, man, just as a hip-hop lover, you know, uh, what are your thoughts about the L.A. rap scene? You know, we, you know, you got a lot of boisterous, successful people like the game, you know, said, I'm the king. You know, you got Kendrick Lamar, you know, is he the king? What are your thoughts about that in a, in a, in, in a hip-hop way? So... Go back to the documentary in okay. in that scene while I'm talking to them kids. Yeah, uh, I, I try to make folks understand. Well, when I was young, my my thing was the king. I wanted to be the, the greatest. You know, that's, that's why I stood in front of the King of Kings. One of the reasons mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wanted that was them the to cover make that about, connection. Right? Yeah. yeah, I made that connection by the way when I saw that album cover. But 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 now today I understand that that's not what this shit is about. I don't want to be king anymore. I want to be a servant because. Yeah. It, it feels better. You grow more. You uh-huh. get more. You learn more. You do more when you give more. Uh-huh. To you know, it just it just grows you in ways that those kind of accolades can't. That they're they're going to cause you to stumble and fall. Uh-huh. Even if it's for the sport, like it ain't you know. It's for There's the- no such thing as a fucking king. You okay. all you guys that are in the game now stand on the shoulders of great men that came before you. Yeah. You can't do what you was doing unless they was doing what they were doing. You were talking about the formula. The reason I got to be so good at at this thing is because of uh, Run, Rakim, KRS-One, and Slick Rick. Mm-hmm. I studied those dudes, you know, to uh, to the point to where whatever they could do, I could do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then I added a little me into it. And then that's the formula. And that's every guy that claims to be a king, that's the same formula they've used. Yeah. Whether they'll admit it or not. Mm-hmm. They studied this guy. They heard this guy and thought he was dope. They started doing things uh, uh, that sounded like that guy. And over a, a period of time, it morphed into more of themselves. And that's how they were made. So you can't be the king um, if you're if you're added DOC into your sauce. That means we the king. I like that. Okay. I'm not sure if he used the word king. I just threw his name. Those are the biggest names out of coming out of L.A. You well, but, but I got to say this about Kendrick. You okay. know what I mean? Um, because if I'd have lived in that space <laughs> uh-huh. and continued to grow, I would have liked to grow into that. To become Kendrick. Yeah. Wow. Who did I compare him to? He did. Yeah. He did. That's exactly. Sway, we were talking about the formula, and I, I specifically said how – inspiring that song was for me and listening to you and your cadence and your words and your choices um and just being an inspiring artist at the time when it came out i remember being in college thinking like who is this like (laughs) where's he from he just sounds like everybody that i love like it it was those people that you named and when sway was like who would he be right now tracy like who would he be and sway was like i got it kendrick like it is crazy that that comparison was made this morning without you even being here. That's why I love the guy because he he has and this is what I'll do respect my mm-hmm. tendencies mm-hmm. because he doesn't have a cadence. He has them all. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. You know what I mean? He doesn't have a way of doing it. He has a plethora of yeah. ways mm-hmm. that he does it, just depending on what the beat says. Yep. Do some rappers they rap the way they rap. And no matter what the beat is, they're going to rap that way. <laughs> uh-huh. I was never like that because of the way I chose to teach myself. Mm-hmm. Um, if a beat came on that sounded like Rick, you would hear a lot of Rick in the rap. Uh-huh. Or that sounded like Ra, you would hear a lot of Ra. You always heard Run because of yeah. that voice, that power uh-huh. thing. So, yeah, Kendrick, to me, like the dude could do anything. He's He could do what y'all could do, but y'all can't do what he can do. What he can do. The DOC is here. Um, big round of applause. Matthew McDaniel Oswald, Oswald English is here. Couple of questions I want to get into why we're here. This is part of why we're here today. Definitely. Right? Uh, history and its importance, right? Our legacy, our heritage and its importance. This conversation we're having right now could be an NFT. Oh, definitely. You definitely. see what I mean, right? Mm-hmm. This is, we determine you know, what art is, you know, and what format art arrives at, 
You know, it doesn't have to be in a frame with, you know, oil paintings and all of that different stuff. Yep. A lot of those European values is what we deem, is what we went by. That's right. So the NFT space allows us to just dismantle all of that. That's right. Right? And and, and then we deem what, what the art is. Yes. Right? Yes. And so NFTs with attitudes, let's go into it. Um, Oswald, yes, sir. I need you for... For those, it's confusing, bro. People don't know what it is. Can you put it in layman's terms of what an NFT is and how does an NFT space works for an artist, an independent artist who can't make money, this might benefit them the traditional way, the conventional way. This is an outlet, right? Yes. Give me give me some examples <laughs> of what this is. Uh, I, I, I like to break it down like an NFT is pretty much a product paired with a smart contract that's a digital contract okay so it doesn't have to be art everyone thinks the nft is these art pieces of art you see it's not uh sway it, just like you said we could take this video we would pair it with a smart contract that basically would um <clears throat> put it on the blockchain ledger so the blockchain basically is a ledger that cannot be altered so let's say we walk out of here we mint it which basically is pushing it onto the um blockchain and showing that we own it right uh -huh. so once we finish doing that it's a, a certificate of authenticity so basically that's what it is if I, if I design this microphone I would pair it with a smart contract and in that smart contract I would it would say sway created this item this is the microphone this is the smart contract it's minted on the blockchain so that the world can see in transparency. Mm -hmm. And we would build in, let's say, after uh, you sell it to the DOC, we're going to build in 10% in that smart contract that can never be changed. So when the DOC is done using the mic, he's going to sell it to Cliff. And you're going to get 10% of that sale. Okay. And when Cliff sells it to him, he's going to get still. You I'm going to get 10% of that sale. Yep. And then and, Cliff gets a percentage of the sale he sells it to. Yes. And then whoever that person sells it to, Cliff, we all start benefiting. Yes. But it's ownership. It's really yep. a certificate of ownership. So it, Heather B., if she built a brand new house or a cul-de-sac with a bunch of houses, she would NFT all seven houses and she would start you you would see a picture because that you you need a mm -hmm. digital representation, mm -hmm. but the physical house and the smart contract, which you could look at as the deed of the house. You don't have to go to MLS or none of that. You go on the blockchain, it's visible. She's the first person to mint it. She owns it. No one can change that. What if she sells it? If she sells it, that's the beautiful part because she can punch in any type of royalty, any th anything she wants to be in that contract for life. She can plug it in when she mints it, and that's, that's set. She sets the governance for whatever this product is. Okay, this is where I start getting confused. Okay. <laughs> so Heather sells her house as an NFT. Yep. She'll get a royalty kickback from it, right? So I'll buy it from her. I get the house. Uh -huh. And next, you'll see the le on the same blockchain ledger right under she was the first owner. You'll see now I'm implemented as the new owner, but I still have to give her 10% if I sell my house because she already built it in. Okay. So these royal this is why it's good when it comes to crypto and stuff like that. This is why banks kind of didn't like it because I don't if if the world can see it I don't really need a bank manager to tell me when I can swap my money or flip my money mm. out you know what I mean so it removes this middleman middle okay. exactly and that's what's so important or a Mona Lisa that certificate on the back that says it's authentic that's what the NFT would be that's the what the NFT would be that certificate that on the ownership. back um okay Okay, yeah. we got we good we good. All right. So we mint in the culture now. Okay, that's the goal. Mint in the culture. Yeah. This is um, something I really want people to look into. You mentioned crypto. Now we we've been seeing was the crash in the, in that market. You yeah. know, with Bitcoin and, mm -hmm. and crypto market. Um, how does that impact NFTs? It definitely impacts uh, NFTs because if the market is down, people want to hold on to their money. Uh -huh. So the spending, you saw in 2021, whatever NFT you threw up on the wall, it stuck. Uh -huh. it, it could be shit. It could be good. It, it, it stuck. In this age where the market is down, people are a little more cautious of where they throw their money. That's why we created something that we felt like you're getting Mona Lisa's of hip hop. The value will never be down. These are moments 
some of the moments in the, uh, the 200 hours of footage that Matthew shot have never been seen. So what we're doing is we're opening the vault to the Shit. golden era and the birth of West Coast hip hop. You know what I mean? And like these brothers right here, you get to literally see them restart from the beginning and not just in a movie where somebody wrote a script. You get to see just babies, brother. babies yeah. out there. It's 18, like, like when you, you go 18 mean? years old. Oh about. man, I was 18 years old and acting bad. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what's going to be on NFTs with Attitude. Yes, NFT with Attitude is basically an NFT collection that spotlights the journey of NWA. And because he captured he, so many different moments, times, interviews, like this moment right here is from 1988, where these gentlemen are in the studio and they they had the they had a hit already. But which one? Uh, what was the first easy song does? that uh, that we easy, want easy? We want easy. We want, okay. And then what is what makes this interview so important is they easy. actually announce. Our new album coming out straight uh, straight out of Compton, wow. and our new single "Fuck the Police." So that memorialized that interview, and this brother was able to like literally capture it. But the beautiful thing is, you get to buy moments of this video. It comes with the NFT, which is a video NFT, which you get ownership of. You also get a commentary of what was happening that day. You also get from moments the people who were there, from the people that lived it. But let me tell you why it's so beautiful, I think. Because just like my son doesn't know Ice Cube, uh -huh. uh, he knows Ice Cube for Are We There Yet? He yeah. don't know Ice Cube was in N.W.A. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So I get to relive this entire golden era with my kids. That's dope. You know what I mean? And reintroduce it, gamify it. You know, that's why it's so beautiful because you reintroduce it to this whole new audience and it's never been done in blockchain. We're the first to do it, so. NFT with Attitude. I want y'all to follow them on Instagram. NFT with Attitude. NFT with Attitude. Matthew. Matt. Sway. Man, how you doing, brother? Man, well, first of all, I feel like I'm in church this week. Right, right, right. I really do. I got so many thoughts of, you know, where we've come from to mm -hmm. where we are right now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, your eloquent introduction, even of Cliff, your mm -hmm. knowledge of hip hop. I'm very proud of you. Thank and, you. Uh, and thank you for having me here. Now, we'll talk about some of the moments. Yes. And, uh, well, first of all, I started in radio. Uh huh. 1580K Day. I was an intern. K Day. Come on, man. Hey. Oh, man. That's right. Damn, he just said that. Yeah, he did. Yo, say some of the names, some of the legends that came from K Day. Oh, wow. Well, first of all, Dr. Dre. Come on. He Dr. worked in radio. Yes. Dr. Dre would do 15-minute uh, mixes. Mm -hmm. So I, But I knew of Dre first. We're the same age. I think he's a few months older than me. Mm -hmm. So he would mix around high schools and stuff. So he had a reputation. It was a few DJs, four or five. Dre was very known. So when I came to K-Day, you know, it was... Really cool meeting him. It was a high and by thing, and then Tony G was Tony G. Over Tony there? G, G the wow, legend. Tony, Tony G actually uh, the first new music seminar. You know, would mm -hmm. school us uh, on what to do in New York. You know, we're like kids and uh, coming here for the first time for the seminar. I went to the Latin quarters. Mm -hmm. Met Scala Rock. Oh wow! <laughs> I mean, um, you documented that. Well, not, you know what? Let me tell you what. Story about that. They came to L.A. first, and I shot KRS-One and Skylar Rock at World on Wheels. Uh-huh. Did an interview. Melly Mel was there. Um, we were talking about the Fresh Fest and all this stuff. So I had the video back then. Nothing digital. Everything was VHS. You got to get two machines if you want to make a copy. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to see it, somebody had to have a, have a monitor and a tape deck, and that was all a big deal. Yeah. So I shot that in March of 87. So that would have been actually, uh, that, that, that was, I guess the seminar, it was, no. it was the following year, uh -huh. the following summer. Uh -huh. I run into Scholar Rock at the Latin Quarters. And uh, uh, this, was, this was actually right before he got killed. So whenever that was, it was about a month before. Uh -huh. And so I was uh, going to mail him the tape 
And I got back to L.A. and I heard that he was killed three weeks oh, later. Yeah. And then I did an interview with Karis One about a year later at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. And these are long interviews. Nobody's really doing that at mm -hmm. the time. So mm -hmm. people were eager to talk to me. I remember Dana Dane around the same time. Wow. So many people I can't think of, it, but I'm at a radio station. You know how that is. And then you could just cart your record up at that point and come up and possibly get it played. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's so much so. I got a chance on music day to sift through the records. Speaking of them again, I stole or took home or borrowed. <laughs> Criminal sniff, minded. Snitched on yourself right there. Huh? <laughs> uh, Criminal minded. Criminal minded. I took it home and listened to it for like about two weeks, blown away. I had to take it back and then convince them that to, to cart it up and mm -hmm. give it a try. Mm -hmm. At K-Day? At K-Day, 1580 K, because there's like 100 records coming through a week. And so everybody there was a little bit older. They were already in radio. It was a different type of music. Uh, K-Day was playing rap to survive. It was an AM station. Mm -hmm. So nobody listened to AM. That's how you had to get people to, it had to be something new, something different. So, um, so, and what's interesting about that is those interviews, I knew Cube. Mm -hmm. Cube used to come over to, I mean, it's so, like one story leads to another. R Muggs was my roommate from Cypress Hill. Muggs from Cypress Hill was your roommate. Ice wow. T, there's a clip of some of the stuff you could see right now in Insane in the Membrane. Just a little snippet, the Cypress Hill doc. And, uh, but Muggs was my roommate from Cypress Hill. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I started doing shows. I don't even know where it is so much. I started doing shows. I brought De La Soul to Los Angeles first. Damn. We had a party at that apartment. At that apart at that party, they gave me Queen Latifah's test press of Wrath and My Madness and Princess <sighs> of the Posse. I was doing shows at World on Wheels. I scraped up my profits from that one and brought Latifah out. Filmed the whole trip from the airport, the show and the limo. That outfit that she's wearing, matter of fact, I just happen to have that shirt on. Uh, this is, this is uh, actually, so, uh, and I got something for you too. For okay. Archives. I'm on the slide. Well, so. y'all just gave me a bag of stuff, man. I, I, now yeah, that I'm yeah. what y'all wearing, I want to yeah, know what's yeah. in the bag. <laughs> well, yeah, you, go ahead and pull it out. So. Okay, man. But go ahead, keep talking. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, I brought Latifa out. Uh, Filmed all of her stuff in LA. Her first time in Los Angeles. Wow. Okay. What, wow. What's even crazier is, and uh, to say I know, I, I really, you know, I want that to be told now. I really believed in it. And I knew I took her to Man Chinese Theater, put her in the footprints. She's 17. She was lying about her age to me, too. Well, when I say lying. <laughs> she, well, no, because, because she was having such a great time. She didn't want to go home. I was paying for her hotel at the Holiday Inn. It was $100 a night. Couldn't afford that, so she came back and slept on my floor with mugs, me and mugs, in the apartment of Queen Latifah. And uh, so I took her sightseeing, She shopping. was Dana then. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. wasn't even, you know she what I mean? Dana. She was still Dana at that point. Yeah, well, she, I, didn't, I only knew that because I booked her plane tickets, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, she, but I took her there, and you can see in the footage, people standing behind us not paying attention. To Queen Latifah. To Queen Latifah. And I have her there, so we do the interview in the footprints. But what's even more amazing, skipping forward, I was on the radio at 93.5 K-Day years later uh -huh. on the weekends. She was getting her star. They sent me over, like, last second. I race over, found a parking space. She's speaking when I walk up. And she sees me and just sort of, you know, she's off the top because she didn't know what was coming. She's like, I see my boy Matt out there. He's the first one to bring me to L.A., taught me, showed me, you know. This is when she got to start on the Hollywood Walk. Yeah. First, first so, hip-hop artist to do that, by the way. Yeah, first hip-hop artist. Yeah. That's dope. So I'm, I got all these thoughts when this happens. But the thing about it is where she got her star is about 10 feet from where I took That's her. That's nuts. My God. And, <laughs> and see, when I say this stuff, it's kind of like, God, oh, you're, real. you're exaggerating. I know. But God. the video. What do you do it? We do it. it. And, right. and look, I'll skip around. This man sitting right here. The DOC. Yeah. I'll skip all the history with Dre and Easy and Cube and all of that to get to that 88 interview. Uh huh. I understood that then. Well, matter of fact, 
I remember the day that I heard they were going to be called NWA. We were all up at the station, all the interns. Mm -hmm. We hear this, and we just started laughing and clapping, bending over, slapping knees and all of that <laughs> stuff. And then when, uh, right before Fuck the Police, I asked Dre if I could come interview them. I thought they were going to be really big. And, uh, quote, Dre said, I don't give a fuck. That's how that interview Came that, about. that was his yes. <laughs> that, was, that was a that's his yes. yes today. That's he still does that. Yeah, yeah, that's his yes today, right? Yeah, today. Drake, can I come over for a meal? I, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and uh, Drake, and, can we can can we go by the amusement park? I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. And, and what I have today for you, by the way, we're gonna hope it has, is related to that day. The day something, you found out. Well, the day I went to interview them. So something very special. We're going to spring on you in a second. Let's spring it, man. Why y'all yeah, waiting? I'm and, ready. Well, one, one more thing real okay. quick. So in that interview, you can hear like uh, when I'm when they're walking in, uh, the DOC walks in last. They had uh, asked me, speaking of guns, if they could have their guns, you know, with the videos. Like, of course, the DOC walked in with a shotgun. <laughs> What sure you doing, I, man? I don't know. <laughs> hey, was wild. Nah, hey, that was NWA. That was then. And see, that's my job. I, I capture it as it was. You know, so um, I say, when they come in, I said, that's somebody I don't know there. And that was the first time I met the DOC, but I knew who he was with. Mm -hmm. And it had to be serious. And it was. Yeah, it was serious. So, yeah. Wow. When was the first time you kid. met Dre? The first day you met Dre? What about what you had? What well, the first day you met Dre? I met Dre in Dallas uh -huh. with uh, Dr. Rock. Uh -huh. You know, he flew him down there to to, uh, to help us with some Feel Fresh, Feel Fresh crew mm -hmm. music. Oh, Feel Fresh, that's right. Yeah, and uh, you know, we did a song called "Toughest Man Alive," and you could sort of just see because it was just a freestyle. He was just banging. He didn't program. He just beat it, and I was bussing. Um, but you could sort of tell. That that combination was cool, mm -hmm. um, but speaking of Matt in this in this NFT thing, right? Like be, be, before y'all continue, what blockchain will this NFT? What what, what, what blockchain? <laughs> not to cut your wisdom, I wanted yeah, to yeah. do that because I want to because my time is. I want to make sure people know where to go. Oh yeah, you know for yeah. for this because the way y'all describing this footage is, I'm trying to get on it. Yeah, like Look. this footage right here. You are about to really understand the struggle, the life, the culture from this. He has mm -hmm. moments from N.W.A., Ice T, uh, Ice Cube, Latifa. Like you're literally getting to own music's history. And we did a deal with a company called NFT Genius and Gaia Marketplace. So it's on Gaia.com. If you go to on Gaia.com, mm -hmm. uh, scroll down, click Hip Hop Archives. Sign up, join the Discord, get on the white list. When I say, I don't care if the market's down, what we have will hold value. Our NFTs, it's the Mona Lisa's of hip hop. Yeah. So when I say, when they sell out, remember they gone. You'll okay. never get another chance to buy them again. That's where the true value comes from, the scarcity. Okay. So, so on Gaia, go on there, get on the white list. The white list gets you access to the private collection in the beginning. You, you'll be the first people that get access to buy. And and why? that's why it's a, it's a commodity. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why you see a lot of crypto millionaires getting that space because you buy the NFT and within the last drop that was on there, and they're on Flowverse, uh -huh. it's a dapper wallet. And the reason we went with, you know, NFT Genius and, you know, the whole Mark Cuban. Group, Gaia Marketplace. Gaia Marketplace. We went with them because they they cared about the fact that anybody should be able to buy these NFTs. And when I say we shopped this, we had five offers. We had offers from Solana. We had offers from bi the biggest NFT marketplaces in the world. And all of them would have limited the reach of African Americans and Latinos of getting in this game. So we said, nope. Mark Cuban got it set up, and Flowverse has it set up to where I could spend my crypto, I could use my credit card, I could do my oh, bank you account. Do, you could use your credit card, anything. There you go. And we knew. I didn't want black people to get to the thing and not know how to set up the wallet or be discouraged when you get to that long, you know, phrase. Yeah. And I didn't want nothing to turn them away. I need I needed to be able to know that 
they had the same chance, shot, opportunity, because when these sell out, if they start flipping for 100 k a million dollars, you see all these these babes, I needed to know that my community got to purchase their culture back. That's right. Gaia Marketplace. You spell Gaia, G-A-I-A dot yes. com. Um, I know Ace. On Gaia. On Gaia. On Gaia Marketplace. Oh, okay. It's on Gaia dot com. On Gaia dot com. DOC, you was going to say something. I, I, I didn't mean to cut your wisdom, but I wanted to make sure that was being said. No, I get okay. it. All right. Very important. Yeah. Uh, but well, I don't know a whole hell of a lot about NFTs mm-hmm. at all. Don't I, I don't even want to get on there and act like I do, yeah. but I do. But what I do know is that, speaking of uh, what Matt's done and, mm-hmm. and his archives that he has, that moment in time that we were, if we knew then mm-hmm. you know what I mean mm-hmm. where it was going what the possibilities were we would have treated it a lot differently absolutely and so that's how important this NFT stuff is it, it may be difficult for you to understand because I don't understand the shit but <laughs> you have to really dig in somehow to find out what's going on in that space because 10 years from now you could be in a space where it's really done well for you and your family and, mm-hmm. and the people in your circle. How they've been saying that for ten years. And it's most <laughs> and, and it's most important. Years. Yeah. My the, the the thing that I'm on now is is education, re education, uh mm-hmm. almost. And I started working with a company called Exposure down in Dallas, Texas, and they teach STEM accredited uh principles through gaming. Mm-hmm. Right? And so what I did was added arts, entertainment, and technology to that platform so that I can go back into these high schools, JUCOs, junior high schools, and start to help these kids understand not only the blockchain and the NFT space and crypto space, but learn the things that they're doing at home anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, wanting to be a producer, wanting to be an engineer, wanting mm-hmm. to be a director, a film, and then, you know, whatever you got in this space, that is attractive to you, I can attach to a STEM accredited program mm-hmm. so that you're not only getting a, a quality education in a business you can go into, but if you choose to go to college, still take that route and have everything that you want. Not that school is failing our kids, but- That's all the I, alternatives. I don't wanna take away from yeah. school. I just wanna add things that, that you guys are missing. And if our children, don't get these these understandings now. They're gonna be a zillion years behind yeah. the behind the, the block in ten years yeah. when education system starts to try to produce education about blockchain mm-hmm. or education about crypto. All the money's gonna be dried up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so that makes that makes a lot of sense. This is the way to close the wealth gap. I'm gonna tell you right now. If you we had some of the most NFTs popular. are a way to close the w- well, blockchain. Blockchain is Web a way to three yeah. is the way to close the wealth okay. gap. You've never seen so many millionaires birthed in such a little time. So this is what African Americans, Latinos, people of color, they got to wake up. We we always last to the party. Let's not be last to the party. Right on. This right here, if you look at India in 1970, uh, you know they got introduced uh, um, technology, computer science, coding. Because they all adapted it with together one unity, literally in 2019, it showed that they jumped up five economic groups. Wow. It's, well, it, it, that's not easy to do. That and doesn't happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So literally, we can do it in a shorter time if we come together together. You know, stop thinking it's it's confusing. Just you know, shit. On go on YouTube, find the right video that you know speaks that your explains language. Explains it, yeah. Yeah, but uh-huh. but let's not miss this window because it's making so many millionaires. For one, which is definitely important because money is a tool. But two, this is the future. And every fifty years, you see a a, a transition of how currency is moved Mm -hmm. and this is that transition Mm -hmm. just like when uh web 2 came in and they had dot coms Mm -hmm. uh, you see everybody the smart people bought up the dot coms and if you bought uh uh car.com if anybody was looking for a car they all went boom they had to go there that's why board ape yachts and all these ones when they threw them up they hit because you know what i mean it's it's literally a non-saturated market back in 2021 Uh when even though it seems like it is, it's really not. But that's what we got to just wake up. I just, if I don't say nothing else in this interview, 
Do not miss this window. This is our window to close the wealth gap. Oswald, you guys said y'all had a gift for me. I heard Matt say it. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. And uh, and by the way, before I give you this, the, another thing, the Chronic album, The Day the Niggas Took Over. That's our history. That's my sample on uh-huh. there. And the L.A. Riots, that's unfiltered. That's us. That's our voice. That's your voice. At that moment. Not, uh-huh. not, not my voice. Uh-huh. Our voice. Our voice. Okay. people uh-huh. on that album. That's very important. And I capture things as they are. It's not to me to tell people what to do or whatever i'm capturing us i have faith in us as a people and where we were gonna where we're gonna go and i always have so with that said because this i believe in giving it to you as it was and it was as people say well mike epps got one and mike he, epps mike man. epps said to me and grabbed me he said i ain't never getting rid of this this is the hardest shit i ever seen so I'm going to give you that, Damn. too. But with that said, it's unfiltered. It might not be politically correct, but it's Dr. Dre in the studio. This is a lenticular series. What I've done is I'm taking my art and I make lenticulars uh-huh. out of the videos and photos. Lenticular is you make a still frame? Is that what? Or what a is lenticular that? is like on a Cracker Jack box uh-huh. when we're little kids, a little tiny thing. It looks like a, people think it's a hologram. It kind of moves. Like 3D. 3D. Okay. So that would be a very small lens. There's all kinds. Deep 3D. Uh-huh. You show them. There's, there's a flip and there's motion, which is what you're going to get today. You're going to get a motion. Like so, a hologram? Uh, it's a lenticular. It, it, it's okay, a motion. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Wow, so man. This is and Dr. It. Dre in the studio. This is from that '88. Let me interview. see this. And let's put that in front of the camera. I want the camera to see this. Wow. Wow. And this is from that. Oh, wow. that's magical. Trey is moving. Wow. And these are so, physical copies of the NFTs. Man, y'all better go ahead and go to NFT with attitude. Wait a minute, dog. I'm way in the back. That's Look at me. In the back. <laughs> wow. See you. Doc in the back. And DJ Yella and Oh Rand my gosh. On Gaia Marketplace. That's crazy. Wow. That's a. That's for me. That's, yours. That's crazy. So uh, you're one of three people to have them now. Ooh. They haven't been released yet. This will be coming so, so, out. So it's me, Mike Epps, and who else? Uh, Snoop, Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. Oh, now nah, your Dre. stunt game is on another level. <laughs> <laughs> so, <and this, laughs> we've been talking about DOC. This, this man's EGO is about to be bananas. <laughs> so this, this is a thank you from me to you. For Yo, all man. that you've done for us. Wow. For being the voice of the culture. Yes. That's right, bro. Yes, okay? he is. You deserve man, this, yes, way. He does. You deserve this. Yes, you do. Wow. Oh, thank what you. a thank beautiful, you. thoughtful Shit, gift. I'm about to cry over here. It's all right, hey, brother. I'm on with brothers. Thank you, man. Wow. Man, thank you, Jesus. Let me go get this man a hug. Cliff, get on the mic, man. Take over, man. Tracy, run the show for a second. Go oh, ahead. my gosh. Yeah, man. Cliff, this is up, absolutely man. incredible. And let me tell you what's beautiful. Because we care about this, yes. when you buy your NFT, we're going to do a lotto. So anybody who buys an NFT from NFTs with Attitude, you might end up with one of these at your house. Oh, wow. Okay. So Sway also, I want to tell you now, so there's a, another one. It's of all of them together with DOC actually in that one. There's a set of 100 I made being released for next year, the 50th anniversary of hip hop. So we're getting all of those framed and everything. It's going to be 100. I'm not making any more of those. So you have one reserved. I got one of those too? You'll have one of those coming. Oh, yes, man. So, and, thank you. and you see that bag we brought you. Yo, because, oh, because, you because, because I got one. On. Hey, it's, it's Starter brand. Let me tell you, we, we did a deal with Starter with the NFT collection because these brothers, if you look at the, the, the video in 1988, these brothers are dressed in Starter. Yes, so we do. said, let's pair our NFTs with clothes that help start the culture. So you're getting lenticulars, you're getting digital art, you're getting Starter clothes, and... Commentary. We're working with Starter and Commentary, commentary which yeah. lets you know what the moment was like, yeah. what it was going on, and that's why we had to bring in one of the originals. You know what I mean? Yeah, because DLC. only DLC could tell you. You know what I mean? None of these gentlemen, when y'all watch this video, Dre makes predictions, y'all are going to be blown away. Dre's like, I know what we about to do. 
You know what I mean? Easy. When you hear the things that they say in this interview, you're going to be like, Jesus Christ. Man. And you get to own the moments. You get to own the moments. I love it, man. Cliff, I'm going to have to get back in the seat. <laughs> Whoever <laughs> thought hip-hop would take this you know, far. You know what I'm saying? Yo. My gosh. <laughs> hey, um, man, we got, we're going to do a series. It's just the first of a couple of conversations we're about to have. With yeah. You. And, and yeah. Sway, yes. can I say one last Absol- thing? Absolutely, <laughs> brother. We you. made sure that we brought some partners with us, which is Darshan and Flex. These brothers have... Man, come get in the camera, man, so they can Come over here, you, you guys. These brothers right here, because we, you, we, we, we won't let you separate the culture. We're not letting you put art over here, music over here, fashion over here. That shit is one item. So these brothers right here, they're doing the impossible. They, do, they set up an NFT drop with basketball. Uh-huh. The way we're bringing, using music to bring our people into the culture and into that blockchain space, these brothers basically have set up basketball and are recreating that and one vibe yeah. for the Web3 blockchain. But their NFT collection is to go and end up buying a major, major team. A major team. They already bought uh, uh, one of Ice Cube's uh, three, three on three. Big three teams. That's dope. Okay. Yes, yeah, that's sir. Dope, right? And these brothers, they're not stopping. They want the they want the blockchain community to be able to own that's super dope. a yeah. major major team. We can't so say we're breaking, breaking up the old ball. We breaking up the old ball. Crazy. Wow. Right? Yeah, man. Wow. So that, that's so Krause Krause House. House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you from? We're from. The, I'm from. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Full radio experience. Yeah, it's crazy, huh? Uh, from the bay, man. From the bay. Oh, well, yeah. wow. Well, meet your brother right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. You and the family now. <laughs> what part of the bay are you from? I grew up in East Bay. Dub Nation. Dub Nation. Come we on, had a good baby. one, huh? You already got to know. You know. <laughs> what city? What city you from? Fremont. From Fremont. Fremont. How far is that from you? 20, 25 minutes nothing? You know, from Oakland. Yeah, you know, 880. That's nothing. Fremont. 510. 510, man. Five Makes one. sense. Yep. Yeah, yep. that man was born uh, adjacent to Silicon Valley. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? Okay, yeah. that's what's in Flex. Where you from? Uh, right outside DC, Northern Virginia. DC? Okay, nice. that's, that's cool mm-hmm. out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it is. <laughs> that's what's up, yeah. man. Well, um, shit, welcome to the family, man. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, and that's incredible what y'all doing with basketball. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, similar to these guys, like, I think one of the big things that, um, right now, NBA ownership, right, is, is in just a handful of, of people, right? Yeah. Um, but, like, this collective intelligence and ownership and agency, I think the fans actually can add a lot of value to these franchises uh-huh. if there's some upside in that, right? Uh-huh. So we were kind of, it's a very similar um, kind of ethos of what these guys are building. We think there's an opportunity to not only have ownership and, and discuss basketball and hang out and do social events like we did yesterday, but at the same time actually have an owner, ownership in their favorite sports teams. Uh-huh. So like I said, working with Cube, who's a legendary man, he's I know y'all blown away, bro. Cube been guy, brilliant from day one. I was going to say, Absolutely. Uh, like yeah. obviously creatively, what he's done with music speaks for itself, but what he's doing with the league, it's incredible. Watch out. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And then so to find you all, how do people do that? Yeah. So um, you can head to kraushouse.club. Mm-hmm. So, Say it again slow. Yeah. Uh, kraushouse.club. Spell that. K-R-A-U-S-E. <laughs> okay. Well, so uh, you know why I do that? Because you got people who are listening that can't see us. Well, yeah. This is live on air, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. All right. So no, we're live already. on air. Yeah. So in case they didn't hear it, I want to make sure they hear no, it. No, no. I yeah, yeah. So cross. Uh, uh, K R A U S E, H O U S E dot club, C L U B. Okay. I, I want to drop one thing. We essentially kind of want to introduce the idea of what we've done, what Flex has done, is a collective mind of people together can really make a force in making this and bridging that gap between culture and what this technology is introducing to the world. Mm-hmm. And our main mission to go and make a stampede in the force and like in the NBA and like buy a basketball team and do all these kinds of things. So, and it's not just not one person, it's all of us. It's, it's a all, community. It's, yeah. a, it's a collaboration. What you guys are doing and what you guys have done is bring a community together and through music. And for us, it's basketball. And what we did yesterday at that event, I wish we, we, you had a chance to come, but uh, it was just a, a, a accumulation of all the music, basketball, esports, and all of these things in one space, and that energy of all of these people are coming together, like-minded people with a really deep fat, uh, 
fan base for basketball. It, and it's about democratization, right? It's yeah. Like we have people in the community. That's 50%, what I like about it. Yeah, yeah. 50% of our community is outside the U.S. Mm-hmm. Wow. We have 16-year-old developers in Nigeria, all the way from 45-year-old, you know, VPs, where and everywhere in between. Mm-hmm. Um, it shouldn't be just limited to you know the handful of billionaires. Yeah, this technology, Preach. yeah, it's mm. going to even the playing field. It's like he said. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's going to even the playing field. They can't control it. So that old those old dinosaurs <laughs> extinction. <laughs> that's right. Let's <laughs> wait. Let me tell you. That's why it's important. And th- it's a beautiful time right now because the kids they don't got the hate in their heart yeah. like their grandparents yeah so it's beautiful <laughs> everything is even everybody loves each other yeah. it's about fun and love games and you know what i mean yeah. it ain't about that it you know what i mean that. yeah so this is why it's a beautiful time to reintroduce all of these products with no negativity mm-hmm. there you go. just the beautifulness of the culture that's well, right let, let's let's continue these conversations we'll be in la soon and we could i want to continue the conversation this, this ain't a uh, pop-up interview this is a okay. series yes because it's going to take that in order for it to consistently resonate the same way that things get implanted on your psyche because it's ran over and over and over yep. through routine we're going to do that with this and it's going to be in a bit beneficial way so darshan i want to thank you for coming through flex i want to thank you for coming through matthew you are a national treasure yes sir and the fact that you i don't know if you digitize so your footage, all of it, uh, the way you've been able to chronicle and save this library of archives, good for you, bro. Because <laughs> you had to wear it all back then to do this. And yeah, the, the beautiful thing is we actually did a deal with Universal. We got Dick Wolf as executive producer. Ice-T is executive producer for a television version of this same hip-hop archive where we're going back. We're talking to all the people in it, showing them their videos like they like seeing your baby photos for the first and time. And then asking you to respond to and, it. And seeing what, because you get the real story. We don't know what NWA had in that interview. They could yeah. have had $5 in their pocket. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then six did. months had a million. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just mm-hmm. hearing those stories, man, it's beautiful. Hey, when Funky and us thank came you, out, Sway, thank you, Sway. Oh no, thank you, man. I was gonna ask you, I ain't gonna do it though. I couldn't. It was a joke. <laughs> it was a joke. Uh, listen, thank you, fellas. Cliff, thank you. And then, uh, if the world don't know now, I'm a partner in this too. Damn it, I just said it. Damn it. Hey. There it go. There it go. I'm a partner yep. in this too. Y'all better see. know. Come on, man. I'm Sway down. is a partner in yeah, blockchain, blockchain millionaire. Yeah, there all right, we go, man. So Let's this go. brother's <laughs> helping us push through because we knew. We can't do this without the voice of the culture. And this brother's been in there from the beginning. That's yeah. right. Yeah. From the beginning. So we said, brother, just just be here. We mm-hmm. wanna we wanna teach him blockchain because we know he has the voice. And if we was ever gonna close the gap, this is the dude to help us do exactly. it. That's right. Thank you, man. Man, the ideas are incredible. I love what you guys are doing for the community, the collective thought process of us as a whole. Yes, sir. Not divided by gender, race, no. social status, financial status, ethnicity, none of that. Yes. Right? Yes. Isn't that how life's supposed to be? That's, That's global right. society. Right. Come on, man. <laughs> right? right? Yes, sir. Love. Yes, sir. Right? One world, one Cliff world. Love. You a genius, man. You did it again. The DOC, can we hang out now, bro? <laughs> we keep we, we keep meeting on the mic, man. We got to hang out and swap game, baby. Bro, come, come on, on, man. You know I've been waiting on come that. On, come on, man. We got to do that, man. That, come on, man. That's happening next, shit. Wait, where you, you on the West Coast or... <laughs> No, I'm in Texas, bro. I'll like, come to Texas, Dad. Yeah, you gotta you know, do that. Yeah. Broadcast. Come on, Kiki, Bum B, all those dudes are my family. Yeah, you know, man. Slim Thug, that's all family. Oh, okay. So I'll come out there. I gotta do it for okay. I gotta do it for <laughs> Dallas, bro. Like Dallas is, you know, we never got a chance. Our chance. That's one thing I'm really proud of about this film. Yeah. Um, and the subsequent series that somebody's it's trying to talk to, be a to me series? about. Yeah. Oh my God. So the doc that's is gonna become up, a series. That's well, a whole it's a conversation, word, right? What's the doc called? The doc is called the doc. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it simple. Yeah. Double but, entendre. But uh, to be able to, like I said, those little kids in West Dallas, you know, and there's a lot of folks in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas that met, that are really talented, that that area had never gotten its love. So there's one thing I'm super proud of this documentary is that, that you get to see where I'm from. Well, you get to see, because we were talking about but damn it, I want to see so I get to see your childhood and everything. Yeah. The DLC. It's really cool, bro. It's really Yo, freaking cool. I, 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 get to, I got to say this. My grandmother 
Eddie May, God rest her soul, is in my documentary. You got your grandmother. Come saying? on, man. See what wow. I'm saying? Hey, 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 let me tell you this. My grandmother turned 109 yesterday. Oh. Wow. Wow. That's wow. legacy. She's an NFT. <laughs> Grandma T. Grandma T. So I know why you say that. My other grandmother's 97. I, I remember the time I put her on the radio. I saw I was done. I could have retired because we got to share in it. Not only my grandmother, her mother, my great grandmother, my mom. In, in the dock? Yeah, man. Come on, man. Wow, show Bro, off. I went back generational on their ass. Yeah, so how, what's the status of the dock? So, uh, you know, there's a lot of conversation going on. We're trying to find a partner. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know. That that shouldn't be hard. Nope. No, it's all right. Yeah, and, he, and, 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 uh, and Badu came on as an EP. That's right. Badu came on as an EP. They're talking about doing a 10, 10 15 city tour with the movie and theaters. Yeah. And me and Badu on a bus, you know, going around and trying to get this community thing together. Amazing, man. Badu is amazing for Ain't so many reasons. Right? Yeah, da- hey, man, I- I've always been a huge admirer, supporter. And but I'll tell you this. Uh, so after I went back to California and, and uh, you know, our, our situation ended, uh-huh. I got back together with, with another woman and had children with this woman. Now, Badu was the doula. For wow. Your kids? She mm. delivered your kids from another woman. I, I mean, God, bro. He loves me. <laughs> he loves me and gave me that. Like, how do you do? Does that, bro? Does that, wow. bro? I, I mean, That's so a I, different woman, yeah. I love her with so much of my soul, bro. It's just, you know, it's, it, it's you can't separate me from that. Wow. That's it's amazing. That. Yeah. She brought your other children into this life. One of my best friends in the on this. That's true tribe. Mm-hmm. That's true tribe. Yeah. She's always been thorough. One hundred. Yeah. She was advanced. She was a precocious. She was ahead. She was ahead. One zillion percent. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. Mm-hmm. What One she was doing percent. when she came out, because um, she used to come up to KML in San KML in San Francisco <laughs> when I was working on Cam- Darshan. He grew up. You might have been the, with a bottle at that time. <laughs> right. Uh, right. <laughs> but I knew it then. I knew it was bigger than music. Music was the tool. Right? How we say money is a tool. That's right. For me, culture was. Yes. Okay, I gotta go through this culture to get you to see the light. <clears throat> And the culture start providing the resources for us to see the light. She brought me back, bro, and then gave me this beautiful baby. Wow. You know, that that really changed the trajectory of my life, man. Puma gave me my heart back. Mm. And these boys gave me my head back. Mm. You know, wow. You have, you have to be a man to raise a man. That's right. Absolutely. Oof. And you got that powerful queen that walk with you. Yes, mm. sir. I'm blessed. What can I say? That's that's black. <laughs> that's black love. Yeah. All the way. All the way. Ain't no question. Come on, man. Hey, man, I love y'all, man. This is a great moment. Hey, we love you. Mm. The culture love the culture, you. Uh, thank and, you, bro. And we yes, want to make sure nobody, you know, we don't want no emails to sway. Like, why they ain't bring Heather, Heather some, B. Nothing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we made sure we brought some <laughs> some good <laughs> stuff for Heather B. You know what I mean? Love that. All right. They would have got hey. at your ass too, boy. Heather, <laughs> Heather's followers are ruthless. They're savages. <laughs> Don't they loyal. Yeah, they're, they're loyal. They savages. They have no coof about them. Man. Yeah. The green clientele is, yeah. is, is, is their brand, but they love Heather B too, and they wanted to make sure that you know we'll, 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 she had something. That's thank beautiful. you, man. Gentlemen, I, I gotta let Destroy come on. He's he's up next, and I always go over my time. But when there's moments like this, um, there is no time, right? Time. There's no clock on, on what we're discussing. Uh, real quick, Oswa. Real quick, yes, this sir. NFT with attitude. <clears throat> That's the Instagram, NFT with Attitude. And if you uh, want to go on the blockchain. Yeah, go to on Gaia, which is O-N-G-A-I-A dot com. Get on the white list. That, that gets you in to be able to buy these first. Cliff Love, I love you. Uh, you hey man, you are you a national treasure. You a glo- you a national treasure, bro. You when it comes to this culture, there's nobody that's more thorough than you who've Preach. seen what you've seen, Preach. who's connected to who you're connected to. Preach. Ain't nobody like you, brother. So I want to say thank you, man. And Cliff is real patient with me, you know, because sometimes he'll text Doc and I don't, I don't hit him back. Oh, let me hit Cliff back, but I'll be in the middle of some shit. 
And then about 36 hours later, hey, homie, I need you. <laughs> <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I'm here, man. What we doing? You know. But I'm glad we made this happen. <laughs> NFT with attitude. You're going to hear me talk about this all the time. Good. Okay. And King Fade is with us. April King Walker's Fade. with us. April we, Walker. We, we got everybody with us, bro. We we, we taking DJ the culture. Battle DJ Cat. Battle Cat, oh. Pulsar Music. We're taking over the yeah, NFT bro, I'm space. I'm coming to New York now. I want come to on. spend some time on Let's the hang East. out, man. Let's hang out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when I'll come to Dallas. Let's go, but man. Shit. There ain't no limitations to where we could travel. Man, we could reach. go to Montana. You fish? <laughs> <laughs> You fish? No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, man. On that note, citizens, thank you for tuning in. We got Destroy coming up next. We'll be back tomorrow, same time. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for coming by today. This was amazing. Yes. The legendary DOC. Hey. My man Oswald. Woo! Thank you. My man Matthew. Woo! Darshan. Woo! Flex. Flex. Cliff Love. Cliff. Who else am I missing? Who's on the camera? King Fade over there. King Fade. 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 Shirt Fade. Kings, baby. There you go, man. You from Brownsville? Nice. What up, family? BK, baby. You probably and got a nice knuckle gang. The Shut, don't mess. Don't you got try a nice it. knuckle gang. Tracy, they want to reach you. How they can reach you? Yes, this is another beautiful day with y'all. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, at it's Tracy, G-I-T-S-T-R-A-C-Y-G. I want to thank y'all for this jacket. This merch you gave me, y'all see the Raiders, they know I'm from Oakland. This ain't an L.A. Raider jacket, it's an Oakland Raider jacket. <laughs> right. Make that very specific. <laughs> and this masterpiece, can you hold that up, Flex? Can you, where, where's the, yeah, thank Matt you. Matt got it. Thank you, Matt, I appreciate you. God bless you, love you, brother. Wow. That's incredible. And on that note, citizens, man, I'm happy. Good news Thursday, <laughs> and we have nothing left to say. <laughs> <laughs>